I'm not going to review the movies. I'm not going to get into specifics. I just have some questions, and I hope that those of you watching this who are fans of the Twilight Saga, and I'm talking about the films here, can answer these questions for me. Question number one. How is it better for vampires to sparkle in direct sunlight than to burst into flames? Because I just, I don't understand, I don't understand that choice. And I know that wasn't just a thing in the films, that that was in the novels. But I don't understand that choice. I mean, and, and I've had people tell me, you know, well, the, the whole allergy to sunlight thing isn't uh, an original part of the vampire myth. But you know what? Lots of stuff isn't an original part of the vampire myth. I'm not, I don't expect vampires to be exactly the same as the first vampire that the first person imagined thousands of years ago. Of course, the vampire legend will evolve and change as it goes from culture to culture and, and as society progresses and our, the stories we tell each other differ and change and grow, but why is it a good change for vampires in Twilight to sparkle in the sunlight instead of just, just dying? I don't, I mean, you ever see Let the Right One In? I'm not talking about Let Me In, because I didn't think that was that great either, but Let the Right One In, the film. And there's that amazing visual where the there's the one character who's bitten by the vampire and she's taken to the hospital and she's in her hospital bed and the nurse comes in and it's during the day and the nurse comes in and lifts the the blinds and the sunlight comes in and instantly the woman who has been bitten by the vampire just erupts into flames the the bed is just engulfed in fire and it runs up the wall and on the ceiling and it's it's just an amazing visual and that sort of thing is just impossible in the Twilight films. They have completely eliminated that. That You're never going to see something that cool in the Twilight film because the vampires don't burst into flames at the touch of sunlight. They glitter. In the same vein as that first question, answer me this. What is the downside to being a Twilight vampire? Because in the three films that I've seen so far... Uh, Edward is all mopey and, and dead set against turning Bella into a vampire because he thinks that it's just, oh, how could, you don't want this sort of life, Bella, you know, this is a cursed life. You don't, you don't want to become a vampire. You want to live the rest of your life as a human. And traditionally, I would say that he has a point because old school vampires, sort of traditional vampires, Dracula type vampires, even though there is definitely an upside to being one of those vampires, there's also a huge downside. I mean, you have hunger for blood constantly, you have to kill people essentially to survive, to subsist, and you can't ever go out in the day, ever, unless you want to commit suicide. There's, there's no daylight period. But in the Twilight world, not only is it demonstrated that you can live a long, happy, successful vampire life without killing people, because they apparently go off and kill animals for the blood. But you can even go out during the day! And what's the worst that could happen? You get struck by a beam of direct sunlight and you start to sparkle a little? What is the downside of being a twilight vampire? Ed no, no, you don't want to be immortal and young and powerful forever. That, who wants that kind of a life? That's, I, I would never curse you like that. Why does that make sense? I'm asking. I'm, I'm, I'm beseeching my Twilight reading, my Twilight watching friends. Why does that make sense? I just... I'm just trying to comprehend, and I... And, and I think... I mean, I, I, I get that the male leads in the films are good-looking dudes, you know? 
even though Taylor Lautner is a horrible actor, I get that he's a good-looking dude and he's been hitting the gym. I get that there's a certain broody appeal to Robert Pattinson. Although whenever I see him with his heavy brow and his just perfectly disheveled hairstyle, I, I can't help but think of David Boreanaz and Angel. And then I can't help but think of how much better that show was than any of these movies. I don't think I've ever encountered a phenomenon, a cultural phenomenon, whose popularity has been more inexplicable to me. And I just don't get it because it's not just that they're bad movies. I mean, and they are really bad movies. And I mean, I'm, I love watching bad movies as much as the next guy. In fact, that's the, that's the reason why my wife and I started watching the Twilight movies because we were, we were hoping for quality cheese. You know, I mean, we, we love Patrick Swayze movies and we love like shit like, you know, Speed and Point Break and Mystery Science Theater and uh, we love like watching so bad they're good movies. But that's not the category that Twilight falls in. The Twilight films aren't so bad they're good. They're just so fucking bad. And it's not just that they're bad, they're so stupid. It's one thing to be inept. It's one thing to have sort of just wooden, boring characters going through a cookie-cutter plot and nothing really happening, but these stories are so stupid, and it's just, it's, it's so disappointing and depressing when I realize that the generation coming up behind me, the teenagers and the tweens that, that are going to have to take over for my generation, after my generation takes over for my parents' generation and then subsequently retires, these are the people that are going to take over for me. And they're just so enraptured by this incredibly, brutally stupid series of films. And I don't understand. I just don't. I try, I try, and I just don't understand. How is Edward a good boyfriend? I mean, he is, we're, we're, we're meant to think that he's a good boyfriend, right? The whole saga is structured around getting us to root for him and Bella getting together at the end. How is Edward a good boyfriend? He, he shows up in her bedroom at night without announcement, without invitation, just sits there and watches her. And then in the, the films after that, the, the more recent films, uh, he's like the most aggressively possessive, overprotective jerk that, that you can possibly imagine. I mean, think of like the most smothering, abusive, lopsided relationship you've ever had with another person. And then imagine that that person was unkillable and incredibly powerful. And could read minds. And yeah, he loves her and he protects her, but he also tells her who she can be friends with. And he's a hundred years old and she's like 17. Why is this not a problem? And that, that's another thing that boggles my mind about the Twilight series. And, I mean, this one I can blame on Stephanie Meyer because she's the idiot who came up with this bullshit to begin with. It tells such a bland, boring story. This, this like, teen romance with really tepid, light horror elements thrown in, all of which are borrowed from much, much better shit, like the Dracula story and, and, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel. And yet the, the, the pieces are there for something so much more interesting. If her vampires were actual vampires, if they had the, the sunlight allergy and, and they were actually intimidating and evil and not just like neutered Anne Rice vampires, uh, and if the story was about what a, a possessive, overbearing jerk creep Edward was, and if the story made reference to acknowledge the, the massive age difference between the, the, the hero and the heroine as something that's kind of weird and, and off-putting and creepy, you could make a great movie about that. Uh, Roger Ebert often says it's not what a story is about, it's how it is about it. And it seems like with, with the potential pieces for a good story in the hands of a capable storyteller, i.e. not Stephanie Meyer, not any of the people who have made the Twilight films, this could have been an interesting, compelling 
story, but instead it takes it in the most boring possible direction. And on top of that boring blandness, it just heaps gobs and gobs of stupidity, like glittering vampires and werewolves that somehow are, when they turn into the wolf, it's like, they, okay, they're not really classic movie werewolves, they're not wolf men, they turn from people into actual wolves, but of course the wolves have to be like eight times the size of a regular human being. Where does the extra mass come from? That's all I, I can resort to, to entertain myself. I'm watching a Twilight movie and I'm not like absorbed in the story and caring about the characters and, and anxious to see what happens next. I'm thinking, wow, those wolves are too big. I want to understand. Even though it, it, it frightens me, even though it depresses me, I want to understand why people who love these movies love them. What is it that draws the Twilight fans to those films, to those stories? It's like, I do a lot of videos uh, about atheism and Christianity and religion, and one of the things that continually draws me to that conversation is looking at people who are intelligent, thoughtful, compassionate, evolved, modern people who have looked at the same world that I look at every day and have come to a diametrically opposed conclusion to the one that I've come to. I look at the world and the only way the world makes sense to me is if there is no God and it's a natural world that has evolved through natural processes. And other people look at the exact same world and the only way it makes sense to them is if there is a God, a theistic God, who is meddling in things and, and making people do things and, and saving certain people and killing certain other people. I mean, it's the only way that it makes sense to them. And that way just could never possibly make sense to me. And I want to know why it makes sense to other people. I want to know what they see in it, what they take from it, how they get to that point. I just want to understand and that's what I want to that's, that's what I want from people who see this and I'm serious if you watch this and you're a Twilight fan leave a comment or do a video response or write me an email or, or, or post a thing on Facebook something tell me why tell me why tell me why tell me why because I don't understand I don't understand. I wanna understand. I wanna understand. I don't understand.